this is just some idea about the dermatomes of the upper limb and there's a general rule when a baby is developing the dermatomes are arranged in such way that upper body will have upper root value upper dermatomes and the lower body will have lower root values or lower dermatomes like i told you axillary nerve is proximal nerve so upper root value ulnar nerve is uh, lower root values it is distal root values like uh, in the upper limb there will be some thumb and little finger yes thumb will be proximal so proximal dermatome and little finger is distal so distal dermatome same story for the lower limb in the lower limb you'll find Great toe will have proximal dermatome and little toe will have distal dermatome. So, what is the dermatome of little toe? Actually, dermatome of little toe is S1 dermatome. And if little toe is S1 dermatome, then what is the proximal great toe? It must be proximal root value. Yeah, what is proximal root value? What do you think? L5. Okay, so great toe is L5 dermatome. Yes. And little toe is S1. Yes. What about the middle three fingers in the upper limb? If you say middle three fingers in the upper limb, then you see this is all discussed already in the back region. If you remember, this is C7 dermatome. If you say this is C7 dermatome, then what about the proximal thumb? Must be proximal root value. Yeah, what is that? What is that? That must be C6. Then what about the lower little finger? Lower little finger must be distal root value C8. Yes, that you remember. Remember this. Now, once you have uh, discussed that, I have taken a diagram from the latest uh, Harrison Medicine, which is 20th edition, came just two, three months back, August month, this year, 2018. Why are you showing diagram from Harrison? Because it's a lot of controversy. That's why. Let us focus upon upper limb. Middle three fingers, C7 dermatome. And thumb, it is C6. And what is little finger? C8. You can see here. So, you are taking reference of Harrison Medicine. Yeah, I have reference of around 20 books actually. But uh, remember that thumb is C6. If you said thumb is C6, then what about the middle three fingers? Middle three fingers, we just said it is C7. And what about the little finger? Little finger, we just mentioned that it is C8. Now, if you say so, what about the other books like this one? This book is also telling some details. There are a lot of books, a lot of dermatomes, so you have to be careful. See, what happens here is they are suggesting this is the line which is dividing index finger into two regions. This is the line which is dividing the ring finger into two regions. They are telling that inner surface is the C7 and what about the outer surface? Outer surface is corresponding dermatome. You mean to say thumb side uh, will be C6 along with the thumb? Yes. And similarly, towards the little finger, you will tell that it will be C8. Yeah, that is the point here. So there are some books will be having different dermatomes. What to do? Still, you see, I told you. What is the middle three fingers? Middle three fingers are still C7 dermatome. So middle three fingers are C7 dermatome. Always remember, what is thumb? Thumb is proximal C6. And what is little finger? It is distal C8. So just remember, maybe we have some difference of opinion, but middle three fingers remain C7. Maybe here they are telling that the fingers which are on the inside is C7, but middle three fingers are C7. But why do you want to know all that? Because I got a question. See the question now. Tell me what is the answer. It is asking thumb and the next finger. What do you think? What is thumb? Thumb is uh, C6, I believe. Yes. What is the index finger? What is the answer? So C6, 7? Yes. C6, 7? Yes. Understand they are asking the thumb. So what is thumb? Thumb is C6. Maybe here or maybe here. And what is the index finger? Now there can be controversy. But remember, index finger should be answered as C7. Though some books will say that the index finger partly may be C6 along with the thumb. But still, what is the answer? Answer will always remain. Thumb is C6 and this is C7. That is a point. Just remember like that. Okay, then uh, what is the next thing? The myotomes. 
What about the minor terms? It's simple, you have to remember, proximal muscles will have proximal root value, like shoulder and scapular muscles, and distal muscles will have distal root value, like hand muscles. Are you trying to say that proximal muscles like shoulder, scapular muscles will have proximal root value of brachial plexus, which is C56? Yes. And distal muscles like hand muscles uh, will have distal root value, which is C8T1. Yes, C8T1. Myotomes. See this diagram. If you want to do the shoulder abduction, if you want to do shoulder abduction, you are using the proximal muscles, shoulder and scapular muscles. So, root value will be proximal. Root value of the brachial plexus, which is shown here, C5. And what if I am doing the elbow flexion? If you are doing the elbow flexion, then C5, 6, the biceps reflex, C5, 6. And what if I want to extend it? If you want to extend it, the triceps reflex, C7. So, C7 is triceps reflex for extension of the elbow? Yes. Okay. You are telling that if I am flexing the elbow, then it is C5-6, the biceps reflex. Yes. And if I am extending the elbow, then it is the triceps reflex, radial nerve C7. Yeah, you can say C7-8 also. So, for flexion, I am having C5-6. Yes. And for extension, I am having C7-8. Yes, like that. And what about the hand muscles? Hand muscles are distal muscles. They will have distal root value. If you want to flex the fingers, flexor digitorum C8. And what if I want to spread and close the finger? Then you are using the interosci. And interosci are T1. T1. Now, there is a question which is asking, finger flexion, flexor digitorum C8, and finger spreading and closing is T1. What is the root value of hand muscles? It is C8, T1? No, give one answer. C8 or T1? In that case, say T1. T1 is a better answer than C8. And uh, as you say, let us proceed further. As you are proceeding further, you will find in the embryology, there is a concept of limb rotation. The upper limb is rotating laterally by 90 degree and lower limb is rotating medially by 90 degree. So, see here. As you look at the developing baby, you will find the upper limb is rotating laterally by 90 degrees so that in anatomical position, the thumb will be found lateral. So, in anatomical position, the thumb is lateral, then <coughs> what about the lower limb? Lower limb, you will see, is rotating medial by 90 degree. As the lower limb is rotating medial by 90 degree, the great toe will come medial. Great toe come medial. One more thing will happen since... The upper limb is rotating laterally by 90 degree. The flexor compartment or folding compartment will come anterior. Whereas the lower limb is rotating medially by 90 degrees. So, great toe is on the medial side and the flexor compartment, folding compartment will go posterior. For the lower limb, the great toe is on the medial side and flexor compartment will go posterior. Let me show you that diagram also. See. Upper limb are folding anteriorly. The folding compartment or flexor compartment is anterior. Whereas the lower limb are folding posteriorly, the flexor compartment or folding compartment is posterior. Why the upper limb is having a flexor compartment anterior? And why the lower limb is having a flexor compartment posterior? Because of the limb rotation. There is a difference of 180 degree. There is a difference of 180 degree upper limb flexing anterior and lower limb flexing posterior. 180 degree difference. 90 upper limb rotates laterally and 90 lower limb rotates medially. 90 plus 90, 180 degree difference. This will discuss yet again. But let us go into more details of dermatomes of the upper limb. Yes, we are discussing upper limb here. So, you know, there are five root values of brachial plexus which will be pulled into the upper limb bird and arranged in such pattern that the middle three fingers are C7 dermatome. And what is thumb? C6. And what is little finger? C8. Now, you will see there is one anterior axial line and there is a posterior axial line. The examiner is asking, anterior axial line is reaching which joint? Shoulder, elbow or wrist joint? And an answer, it is reaching almost the wrist joint. And what about the pre-axial, post-axial border? Actually, there is a concept that the thumb side or the radius bone is pre-axial bone. And 
the little finger side, the ulna bone is postaxial bone. So, thumb side, the radius bone is the preaxial bone, whereas the little finger side, the ulna bone is the postaxial bone. And similarly, there are arteries. These are questions asking who is the preaxial artery and who is the postaxial artery? It is very simple to remember as the arteries are developing. The thumb side radial artery will be the preaxial artery and, and the little finger side, the alar artery will be the postaxial artery. So then who will be the axial artery is a question. Axial artery is depending upon the development of the upper limb bird and is uh, who is the axial artery is actually the anterior interosseous artery. So anterior interosseous artery is the axial artery is some question coming? Yes, it is some questions coming. Now, as you see, the veins are also like that. There is a vein which is running with the thumb side. Do you know which vein run to the thumb side? The vein which is running at the roof of an arterial sub box. So, vein which is running at the roof of an arterial sub box along with the thumb side or the radial side is the cephalic vein, which is a preaxial vein. Cephalic vein will be preaxial vein, whereas there is a vein at the base of the forearm. And that vein which is at the base of the forearm is the basilic vein, is the postaxial vein. Basilic vein at the base of forearm is postaxial vein. So, where is the anterior axial line reaching is a question and we have already answered. Reaching almost the wrist joint. Now, if the anterior axial line is reaching the wrist joint, the next question is obviously, where is the posterior axial line reaching? And you are looking for the posterior view now and you have to tell the posterior. See, anterior was actually here, but this will be the posterior. So, where is the posterior axial line reaching? Actually, posterior axial line will reach the elbow joint as compared with anterior. It is reaching the posterior elbow joint. Let us draw a diagram for that actually here. So, posterior axial line is stopping at the elbow joint. Yes. Can you tell me one thing? What is the dermatome of the middle? Three fingers on the dorsum of the hand. This is nail bed, nails shown here. So, what are the dermatome of the three fingers on the Dorsum, maybe dorsum, maybe ventrum does not matter. It is the same C7. It is same C7? Yes. Then you will tell the thumb is proximal C6. Yeah, you see here. And then you tell the little finger distal is C8. Yeah, of course. Then what is the lateral elbow? If you say lateral elbow, it is more proximal. So it will have proximal dermatome, that is C5. And what about the distal? Medial elbow. If you say distal medial elbow, then it will be T1 dermatome. Now, once you have this idea, I'll ask you a question. In Arab's palsy, when there is injury to the C56 root value, where is the sensory loss? In Arab's palsy, when there is injury of C56 root value, the sensory loss will be on the lateral aspect of the elbow. If it is a lateral aspect of the elbow, including the thumb side, then you can immediately say, what about the clump case palsy? Because clump case palsy palsy is distal root value infected and uh, that is the clump case palsy here. You mean to say sensory loss will be limited to the medial side of elbow and the little finger side? Yes, that is sensory loss in clump case palsy. Tell me one thing. What is the dermatome of the shoulder tip? Shoulder tip? Yes. Must be the proximal root value. You mean to say C4? Yes. Do you realize that uh, C4 is also the if you are talking about the C4, so what do you think is the dermatome of the shoulder tip? Must be the proximal root value and that proximal root value is of course C4. If you remember, C4 is also the root value of the phrenic nerve. So what is the importance? See, if there is the pain of uh, gallbladder, which is acute cholecystitis, then it will be referred to the right shoulder tip. Why there is a referred pain to the right shoulder tip? Because 
when the gall bladder is irritated there is some inflammation it is going to inflammate the area which is uh, the diaphragmatic area and the central area of the diaphragm and also the peritoneum so peritoneum and the diaphragm and the phrenic nerve are irritated and there is a referred pain to the same root value as the phrenic nerve so what is the root value of phrenic nerve it is c4 major value and dermatome of the shoulder tip c4 so that's why the refer pain similarly if there is a case of spleen rupture due to blunt trauma there was a blunt trauma to the abdomen and spleen rupture it is bleeding spleen then there will be some irritation of the surrounding area could be the central portion of the diaphragm and also the peritoneum so phrenic nerve carrying the pain and referred pain to the left left shoulder tip this will discuss in the abdomen region also now you see the dermatome of the shoulder tip is c4 c4 and what is the nipple level that will be t4 and t4 what about the intercostal brachial nerve as you are talking about intercostal and brachial nerve it is having t2 root value and it is also not only on the thoracic uh, skin but also upper inner arm upper inner arm so you're telling that there is some intercostal brachial nerve with the t2 root value yes it is not only on the chest wall but also the dermatome of the upper inner arm and you should be careful about this nerve because when you are doing sentinel lymph node biopsy for you know maybe ca breast so there is a cancer breast and you were taking some biopsy like sentinel node biopsy this nerve is at risk of injury intercostal brachial nerve which is coming from the thorax region towards the upper inner arm bringing the dermatome t2 dermatome to the upper inner arm